I always believed I had a perfect life. I was married to Mark for 10 years, and together we raised three beautiful children. Ethan, the adventurous eight-year-old, Mia, the inquisitive six-year-old, and little Noah, just three and full of laughter. Our home was a haven of joy, filled with the sounds of our children's laughter and the aromas of my cooking wafting through the air. Mark was the loving husband who surprised me with flowers and spent weekends building forts with the kids. To the outside world, we were the epitome of a happy family. But beneath the surface, shadows loomed, unnoticed by me. I often marveled at the closeness between Mark and his best friend, Ryan. They had been inseparable since college, bonding over late night study sessions and shared ambitions. It was heartwarming to see them together, sharing inside jokes and supporting each other's dreams. I cherished their friendship, believing it brought a special dynamic to our family. Little did I know that this bond would soon unravel everything I held dear. As the years passed, I saw how Mark would light up whenever Ryan was around. They had a unique chemistry, effortlessly slipping into deep conversations and playful banter. I often found myself smiling, feeling lucky that my husband had such a supportive friend. But as time went on, I noticed something unsettling. Ryan was increasingly present in our lives, often joining us for family dinners and outings. It felt normal at first, but as the closeness grew, so did my unease. One sunny Saturday, I planned a quick trip to the grocery store. It was a simple task, but as I loaded the kids into the car, I felt excited about our family dinner that night. Mark had promised to spend the day with the kids while I prepared a special meal. As I was shopping, I texted him to remind him about our dinner plans. He assured me everything was fine and that he was looking forward to it. After returning home, I noticed Mark and Ryan were in the backyard, laughing and joking around. The sight warmed my heart, and I thought about how lucky I was to have such a supportive partner and friend. Little did I know that this would be the last day of my innocence. As I set the groceries on the counter, I felt a sense of contentment wash over me, blissfully unaware of the storm brewing just beneath the surface. When I walked past the living room, I overheard snippets of their conversation. They were discussing some recent movies and TV shows, their laughter ringing out like music in my ears. I couldn't help but smile, appreciating the bond they shared. But somewhere deep down, an instinctive tug of worry began to unfurl in my chest. Upon returning home from the grocery store, I unloaded the bags while the kids played in the backyard. As I walked past our bedroom, I noticed the door slightly ajar. Curiosity got the best of me and I peeked inside. The sight that greeted me shattered my heart into a million pieces. Mark stood in front of the mirror, wearing my favorite dress, his hair styled and makeup carefully applied. Time seemed to freeze as confusion and betrayal flooded my senses. I felt rooted to the spot, unable to comprehend what I was witnessing. This was not the husband I thought I knew. The man before me felt like a stranger. Mark? I called out, my voice trembling with disbelief. He turned around, his face a mix of shock and panic. Samantha! His eyes widened and he hurried to pull the dress off, but it was too late. I had seen everything. What the hell is going on? I demanded, my heart racing. Mark stammered, struggling to find words, but the silence stretched painfully. Finally, he uttered, Samantha, I can explain. I interrupted him, fury and hurt bubbling to the surface. Explain what? Why you're wearing my clothes? Why you've betrayed me? I never meant for you to find out this way, he pleaded, looking genuinely remorseful. Then how did you expect me to find out? I challenged, feeling my anger rise. You've been lying to me. I trusted you. Taking a deep breath, he confessed, I'm gay, Sam. I've been living a lie for years, and I've been seeing someone else for the past four years. 
The words hung in the air, hitting me like a physical blow. You've been seeing someone else? While we built a life together? Tears streamed down my cheeks as the reality of our marriage crumbled around me. Who is it, Mark? Who is this person? He hesitated, his gaze dropping to the floor. It's Ryan. He's my boyfriend. The name cut through me like ice. Ryan, the best friend I had welcomed into our lives. The man who had laughed and shared memories with my husband while I stood by, believing their friendship was innocent. How could you do this to me? I whispered, my voice barely audible. I didn't want to hurt you, he said, desperation creeping into his tone. I thought I could handle it without involving you. What kind of husband hides something like this? I shot back, anger boiling over. You think I wouldn't have understood? I could have supported you, but you chose to betray me instead. As the tension escalated, I felt my world tilt off its axis. How could I reconcile the man I loved with the man standing before me, a stranger shrouded in betrayal? The memories of our life together flickered like shadows, taunting me. As the days turned into weeks, I found myself in a whirlwind of emotions. Mark moved into the guest room, and the kids sensed the tension, their laughter replaced by awkward silence. I leaned on friends for support, and they encouraged me to find a way to heal. I started attending a support group for partners dealing with infidelity. The stories I heard from other women resonated deeply. It became clear to me that I wasn't alone, but the pain of betrayal still lingered. Mark and Ryan's closeness weighed heavily on my heart as I couldn't escape the memories of their laughter and shared moments. One night, I attended a group meeting where a woman shared her story of betrayal. It's the way they act that hurts the most, she said, her voice shaking. You start to question every moment you thought was genuine. Her words struck a chord, and I felt the tears spill down my cheeks. In that moment, I realized how deeply Mark and Ryan's relationship had affected me. The memories of their camaraderie haunted my thoughts, and I questioned everything I had once believed. When I returned home, I found Mark on the couch, looking dejected. Can we talk? He asked quietly. What's there to talk about? I replied, my voice tinged with bitterness. You've made your choices. I want to try to be a good father, despite everything, he said, sincerity in his eyes. I love the kids, and I want to support you too. But how can I trust you again? I countered, my heart aching. You've shattered the trust we built over a decade. As the weeks went by, the kids began to notice the strain between Mark and me. One night, Ethan asked, Why is Daddy sad? Is he going to leave? I knelt down to their level, forcing a smile. Daddy and I are just going through some changes. We'll always be a family, no matter what. But the fear in their eyes broke my heart. I wanted to shield them from the pain, but the reality was unavoidable. Mark's actions had shattered the image of the family we once were. Meanwhile, Mark and Ryan grew closer as they navigated their new relationship. They would spend hours talking and supporting each other, often texting late into the night. It was as if they were weaving a new life together, leaving me feeling like an outsider in my own home. I watched them from a distance, my heart heavy with betrayal. The laughter they once shared felt like a knife twisting in my gut, and I couldn't escape the feeling of being left behind. One evening, as I sat alone in our bedroom, I received a text from Ryan. Hey, can we talk? A wave of anger washed over me. How dare he? I confronted Mark about it. Your boyfriend wants to talk to me. Is this some twisted game? Sam, please, he begged. He just wants to apologize for how things went down. You think I want to hear an apology from him? I snapped. He's the reason our lives fell apart. When I met with Ryan, the tension was palpable. He looked remorseful, but I didn't care. What do you want? I asked, crossing my arms. 
I'm sorry for what happened between us, he said, his voice steady. I never meant for any of this to unfold. Mark and I were just trying to figure things out. By hiding it from me? I challenged, feeling anger rise. You both betrayed my trust. How can you expect me to believe anything you say? Ryan's gaze fell to the ground. I know it's complicated. We didn't plan for things to go this way. Complicated? That's an understatement. I shot back. You've destroyed my family. After that confrontation, I took time for myself. I enrolled in therapy, focusing on healing from the betrayal and reclaiming my sense of self. The process was arduous, but I began to find my footing. With each session, I realized that I needed to prioritize my own happiness. Through therapy, I learned that I could create a new narrative for my life, one that didn't revolve around the pain inflicted by Mark and Ryan. I started to focus on what truly mattered, my children and my own well-being. As the months passed, I grew stronger and more resilient. I began reconnecting with friends and pursuing hobbies I had neglected over the years. I found solace in writing, pouring my emotions onto the page. Mark noticed the changes in me, and I could see the guilt in his eyes. You're doing great, Sam, he said one evening, a hint of admiration in his voice. I'm proud of you. Thank you, I replied, surprised by his words. But I need you to understand that my healing isn't about us anymore. As we navigated co-parenting, we learned to communicate more effectively. We set boundaries and focused on our children's well-being. While it was still challenging, we managed to create a stable environment for the kids. The laughter of my children filled the air again, and for the first time in a long while, I felt a sense of peace. Mark and I began to develop a new friendship, one rooted in respect and understanding. I eventually began dating again, cautiously exploring the idea of love. It felt strange to put myself out there after the heartbreak I had experienced, but I was determined to embrace new beginnings. One day, I met someone who understood my journey. We connected over shared experiences, and it felt refreshing to share laughter and joy again. As I stood on the cusp of a new chapter, I accepted that love takes many forms. While my marriage with Mark had changed, it didn't erase the love we once had. We had grown together and apart, but ultimately, we were still a family. With each passing day, I found solace in the idea that life would continue to unfold, bringing new opportunities and love along the way. I stood in the kitchen one morning, watching my children play together, their laughter echoing through the house. The journey had been long and arduous, but I had emerged stronger, more resilient than ever. And as I looked toward the future, I felt a sense of hope. My life was not defined by betrayal. It was shaped by the love I had for my children and the strength I had found within myself. The road ahead may be uncertain, but with my heart open and ready to embrace whatever comes next, I was confident that I could navigate the challenges ahead.